What's up, my folks? I hope y'all are doing well. Okay, what we're going to do today is we're going to kind of progress a little bit. Um, I'm just going to, there's a picture right there on, on a journal ad, old Amos. I know you old timers remember that ad. Well, Garner, Garner's been out putting ads out for these stud dogs for many years. Um, <clears throat> what I'm doing here is I'm proving I'm proving what I was was telling you how the dogs evolved. You know how they they continue to gain in popularity in my region anyway, and and they continue to gain real heavy popularity until probably close to 2000, and it kind of plateaued and went back down. Um, but this is in a 1982. Um, so, you know, you heard 1970, this is 12 years later. Okay. This is after the journal has been out and I'm going to show you something. What really made this journal take off amongst dog people is these right here, that right there, that little certificate people wanted to see their name in that champion certificate. All right. So this the popularity of reporting what your dogs were doing and all that, and it wasn't just considered a four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten time winner anymore. If you had a dog that meet met the uh, Sporting Dog Journal's champion criteria, you could register it as a legit champion, and they went as far as you know putting putting all the information in, so you had an idea. Um, you know, the problem is, man, you know, this dog here is, is a fairly famous dog. But when you got into to these later on, the the it was really in like my generation of it. They they really took it to a different level as far as like uh, what the yeah, it just it wasn't the same quality champions. Let me put it that way. Some of them were. And then a lot of them that didn't it, they didn't even put in were legit. So. It was kind of got to a really slippery slope of what to believe in just this magazine. The longer the magazine was out, you know what I mean? I'm not saying it was all bullshit. I'm just saying there was a lot of bullshit, put it that way, a lot. Um, but anyway, uh, just for an instance, like, you know, to explain the popularity, there was probably, I can't remember how many report. I don't have all, it's just pages of old ones, but we're all, I saved all of the March, April, 82 here and I'm going to read you a few store a few of the reports and now in 1970 there were several magazines going out I had several hordes of magazines in my lifetime you know I got one horde uh, the rumors was that it came directly from Pete Sparks his old house when he got sick a guy that was with there uh, went up into the attic and into the barn you know where the the barn is is a uh just a different he had a lot of the year friend of mine that's where he printed out his stuff in the little little barn and i guess a lot of the sporting dog journals he had uh, copies and copies of every sporting dog journal from like the beginning until i can't remember um it was in the 80s i believe it was but uh and that's where uh the, my first big hoard i bought it from a lady that had them um, and I gave her a buck a piece and I got crates of, we all did. And, uh, she had just tons of them. I don't know how she ended up with them, but that's where she said they, they come from. So I had that big horde plus the magazines that I, I subscribed to back then. So I seen a lot of the older stuff and it, this was a trend that was really true. Okay. From the seventies, you might've had in a three months time, like a quarter, uh, you, you might have had a hundred shows throughout the country. That because they were all legit, they were all you know uh, had they had photographers there. Matter of fact, I went over this on one of the, the videos I did, where one of the photographers was actually a Humane Society uh, informant, and she had dogs. They, you know, I think she went by Briar Storm or uh, Briar Patch Kennels or something like that. Um, but she was a, a, a supposedly, you know, she went in there and took pictures, a lot of the pictures that was in the magazine. So. Um, anyway, let's get on to like what I was saying. Now, 82, there was probably four or 500 reports from March, April, just that those two months. Okay. In, in the journal. And I'm going to read a few of them to you that, uh, 
you know, they're very short one liners, like I said, but the, uh, the, it's pretty, it's pretty interesting. Like you can see the, the bloodlines, how the bloodlines have evolved, you know, like in the seventies, you've seen a lot of older bloodlines, you know what I mean? Like the, even the Colby was a very used line and the, you know, the Colby line or stuff and stuff like that. Or you get into the eighties. Now the people have, the old timers have pretty much sold out. Um, uh, most of them have, you got a few, few that turned into breeders and are selling their stock and now people are have done their own crosses and you've got a lot of bloodlines available to the public this was the 80s so the uh the bullshit was pretty much uh leveled out in the dog so you had a lot of uh different teams like black and white dog men to going into each other at these times you know where and and so it really the game really started really pepping up uh, and, and I think it, it continued to grow in popularity until, like I said, the, probably the late 90s. And uh, then it just got to be too much trouble. I mean, too much trouble where it wasn't worth it no more. But, okay. Well, th this is where you get into the, some of the... the you, you don't really understand the, um, the breedings, but you can come back in here. Okay. All right. First match, Rose Geronimo, Chavez, Bucky. Geronimo, two-time winner, sired by Zeb Bucky, a one-time winner, sired by champion Jocko. Geronimo is picked up at 137 and gives a good courtesy scratch. All right, Hall Snowball. Oh, I already read that one yesterday. Uh, old Man's versus King Man's Kingfish. Old Man, a black, low passy hill breeding. Kingfish, a red, counted out at 28. Acme Kennels Chomper versus the Raging Cajun's Cajun. Cajun from Bass Red Boy Breeding Chompers by Divine's Bruce out of AB's Rosie. 11 scratches. Cajun takes the count at 127. At me kennels. Chomper. Winner. Palmetto Bob's Rocky. Dodges Jack. Jack from Klaus Breeding. You don't even see much of that anymore. Klaus Bloodline. Can't keep up with Rocky's hard mouth. He can't run. This hit third at 50. Best in show, Palmetto Bob's Rocky. DC's Red Man boils Frito. Jack handles Red Man sired by Bully Bob out of Tuffy. Frito by Arizona Red out of a Sparks Darlene. Frito catches up the wind to scratching at 59 when Red Man goes all the way over, but don't take hold. Boils Frito. Horns Lobo. No, we already read them. Um, Brown Sleepy versus Huggins Jody. Sleepy from Palmetto Bob. Jody picked up in 30. Brown Sleepy. Holland's Pretty Girl. R.E.'s Brandy. Pretty girl won't run her first. FNR's Pig versus Ralph Prince. Pig, a one-time winner from the Jarrett, sired by Champion Head. Prince, sired by Champion Angus, bred back to his damn Heidi. Prince picked up in 157. Both give courtesy scratches. Our winner, FNR's Pig. FNR's Dozer versus Jones Cracker. Dozer from Jarrett, two-time winner. One time, two-time loser. He won't run a second at one hour. Jones Cracker. Chain Gang Smokey versus Stedman's Franco. Smokey gets ahead after 20. They each run two. Franco counting out at 41. Chain Gang's Smokey. Mayor's Jeep with a G. G-E-E-P versus Chain Gang's Alabluda. Jeep Red Mail from Arius Alabluda double bred off of Champion Zebo. Jeep can't keep up with a hard mouth. And Alabarita don't run his first at 33. And doesn't work, the hard mouth from him doesn't run his first at 33. Hall's Benji versus Holly's Gilly. Benji, a three-time winner from Gomez breeding. Gilly, a Pedro Topaz. Mouth too much for Benji. is picked up in 36. 36. Cajun's Rip versus Big D's Preacher Boy. Rip, a buckskin handled by Dirty Jim. A two-time winner by sired by Low Posse's Buster. Rip, two pounds light. CJ handles Preacher Boy from a black from Carver Bloodline. Preacher Boy is picked up at 110. Both give good courtesy scratchers. Borderline's Booger versus Smith's question. Winner, Borderline Booger, 24. Very short, you know, to the point, but there was a lot of a lot of shows back then. You know what I'm saying? Versus we've already ran went over a whole three months back in the 70s. Okay, I remember you yeah, everybody remember Rock and Robin from our Rockin' Robin's Jack versus VMB's Black. Jack from Headhunter Breeding. A half over. VMB's Black Eli Breeding. Jack don't scratch at 41. VMB's Black. 
Smith and Walton's Bad Billy, famous dog, versus J&B's Black Sabbath, males 51 and a half, referees R. Williams. I wasn't doing the refs, but Smith handles Billy, sired by Needham's Audible out of Gibson's Annie, and B&S handles Sabbath, sired by Shagnastgate out of Miss Holiday. Sabbath tries, but can't keep Billy out. They each run five, and Billy is declared winner at 1-11. Medicine Man, Jesse James. Versus Santa Rosa Boys Red, males 38. Jesse James has won over Razor, and the Red has won over the Champion Dragon. The Red can't run his seventh at one hour. Eastside Tommy's Max and Mr. T and the Pullocks, Luke, male 52. Max sired by Champion Rascals, Luke sired by Snooty out of Hannah Patch. Even match, the small pull, the small Pullock mishandles Luke at 123 and is fouled out. Tommy's Max. Jesse and Co.'s Buck. Corn Cob Gang Zap. Buck a black and white sired by Old Joe out of Buffy. Concho Breeding. Zap a red sired by Valdez Crow out of Dusty. An Eli Ironhead bloodline. Buck decides to sit it in the bleachers at 53. Jumped it. Barrett's Ruby versus Ballinger's Tear. Tear sired by Champion Hurt. One scratch each. Ruby don't go at 32. Ballinger's Tear. Dunn's Crazy Coot versus Crab's Kojak. Coot sired by Reno out of pool hall. Out of a pool hall bitch from E. Reese. Kojak from a Colby bloodline. Kojak don't go at 38. Gamus and Show. Dunn's Crazy Coot. Williams Geronimo. Hathaway's Brains. Geronimo sired by Cousins Tar Baby out of a bitch out by Hyde Satch. Brains of Zebo Angus bloodlines. Brains don't make a second at 28. Best in Show. Williams Geronimo. Third, Adams, Julio, and Mills, Boogerty. Julio soured by Adams, Joe. Boogerty soured by Davis, Scratch. Out of Double Bread, Boomer, Bitch. Meaning Boomerang. Julio don't make his third at 21 minutes. Mills, Boogerty. All right, Adams, Razor, Randy versus Jones, Cactus. Females, 33 and a half. Renee, Razor's Renee, I mean. Uh, Renee Colby bloodline, Cactus, the litter mate, the Duns, Panzer, two time, two game dogs, 19 scratches. Renee don't run at 117. Winner Jones Cactus. And there he is right there on the bottom with his certificate with Cactus. Oh, crazy. But, uh, all right, we'll do a little bit more and then I'll let y'all decide if you like this or not. I'm probably got enough to do two more videos and then I'll be done with this shit. All right, uh, more show news. Okay, Ron G's Handsome versus Country Boys Jack. Males 40 Handsome from Patrick's, sired by Ching Ling out of Boney Maroney. Jack a Buckskin from Reed, sired by Al Capone out of his wife's Lucy Jack. Turns at 24, doesn't make his last, his first, but is counted out his second at 32. I don't know, they misprinted that. WM and WM's Go Go versus DNC's Tarzan, and 55 males. Tarzan, a one time winner, Go Go makes one at 25, but it don't go at 34. Sam H's Tiger versus Good Guys Sage. Sage and Handle triples Sally Blackjack. Tiger on top for 30, two scratches each, and Tiger don't go at 114. Sage. Greg's Reb versus Joe L's Black. Reb from E. Reese sired by Reno out of Pool Hall, bitch. The black from a Colby bloodline is counted out on his 11th scratch at 56. Rib. Dunn's champion TJ versus Durrance's Cheetah. TJ, a four time winner from the Mosley Smeller Miss Georgia bloodline. Cheetah don't run his fourth at 30. Dunn's champion TJ. Rebel Ch Kennels champion, or Rebel Kennels Cooney versus J, J and G's Jenny. Cooney Oso Negro Breeding from Wood. Jenny Syrup a Castelli's Bad Dude out of Rufia. Rebel picks up a down dog at 40 and gives a good game courtesy scratch. Best in show, Jenny's Game is in show, Cooney. TM and Swan's Gypsy Stewart's 21. Gypsy Ironhead Breeding, 21 is sired by Cooper's Blackjack. Gypsy don't run her fourth at 32. Stewart's 21. All right, you can see how it was going. It was going and going. So there was a, you know, that you can obviously see through the proof that through the history that the dog's gotten much more popular 
uh, and when something's much more popular, it gets much more accepted by people around it. You know what I mean? So, it, like I was trying to say, that during this time is, you know, when a lot of people were having their their childhood in the dogs and and being around the dogs, and it wasn't a a cursed thing like it is. So, yeah, and and it just continued to grow. I'm not going to go up much north of eight nineteen eighty two because. You know, there's a question of when, the, how far they go back to mess with people. I know they go back to 2008. I know that. <laughs> so, you know, but I would, I would keep it all my info and, and, you know, 40 years old, you seem to be doing all right. You know what I mean? You'll be, but I wouldn't get too, too, I, it doesn't uh, do any good for the, for people to know that doesn't need to know anyway about them getting into the real modern dogs you know what i mean if they, if they know about the dogs and all they're going to know what the, the history of some of the dogs in them is anyway so but anyway folks y'all take care y'all stay safe and y'all keep on bulldogging